Hey guys, I just want to do a little uh, overview and tutorial on how to solder BAs. Um, these little guys are not easy to do, so. Um, but I had a lot of people ask me how to make their own DIY IAM, so this will be the first and maybe a couple tutorials. We'll see how far I take it, but I just want to show you guys at least how I do it. Now, you may do it differently. Um, the industry might do it differently, but this is how I do it, and I've gotten pretty good results. Now, I don't use flux. Um, anytime you're doing soldering on the scale, like micro scale, um, you usually want to use some sort of flux because it's going to allow the solder to, to wick um, across the pad more evenly. Um, it'll be more uniform. But I found that if you have a good rosin core solder and you apply it to the pad quickly enough, um, you won't have issues uh, with the adherence. So, oops, let's see if I can show you guys this. So, every BA has a top and a bottom. These BA are made by E Audio, um, it's just a Chinese brand. So there's no branding or anything on them. They literally have nothing on them. Um, so the way to tell the top from the bottom is to look for some sort of marking. So you see these two dots? That is the bottom of the driver. And if I were to flip it over, there's the top. And now you can kind of see it, but right here, there's a little bit of red painted. Um, that's also indicating that that's the top side but yeah not not much to go off of um, but yeah so that is basically what a BA looks like and how you identify the top from the bottom if it has no branding on it um, if it does have branding on it then the whatever side has the branding on it will be the top side um, so when you go to solder a BA let me flip it in its correct position it's always going to be the pad to the right. So the pad to the right will be your positive, the pad to the left will be your negative. Um, I'll wire these up correctly. I'm actually, the part of my design for this IM that I'm building right here requires that um, these are wired in reverse polarity, um, but I'll show you the correct way. So. Grab my tweezers. So, if you even want to begin to think about doing something like this, sorry, I'm trying to get this to focus right here. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Anyway, um, so yeah, so if you want to try to solder BAs, you're going to need a thing called a helping hands. Um, it's like a little device to hold whatever you're soldering whatever you're working with uh, basically they just hold stuff for you so let me uh, try to get this in focus stupid camera dude this camera is retarded come on focus right there there you go alright so I have the BA in the helping hands. I have my soldering gun. Uh, you want to make sure your tip's nice and clean. So I got a little sponge here. I'll show you. Got a little solder sponge. You want to clean your tip. Also got some of this uh, brass here. Just make sure your tip's really clean. And I have some wires laying off here to the side. I'll try to see if I can get up in here real close. Come on. You can do it. Oh, you were so close. God, this fucking camera sucks. There we go. Alright, so...
you're going to want to grab your wire. Now you're going to need tweezers too. So you'll need tweezers, you'll need a pair of helping hands, you'll need a soldering iron, you'll need good solder. This is um, 60... 6337 so 63% uh, lead I think or 63% tin and the rest lead um, so you're gonna need helping hands soldering gun solder you know stuff to clean your soldering gun you can't just use a, a piece of crap um, and what I'll do is I'll have the roll on the other side of the helping hands they you can get nicer ones too that have like many more um, of these little pincers here but uh, just take a little dab of solder. Take a little dab of solder. So you see right there. Just got a little bit on the tip. Not a lot. It's just so I can put some fresh solder on the BA because I don't know the condition of the solder that's on there already. And you're going to want to line up your wire carefully. And just tap it. Not even a second. It only takes only takes a second. So um, let me try with one more. I'll kind of show you guys a little bit better, hopefully. I'm just gonna kind of point this down a little bit. Alright, so you got your BA, you got your soldering pad right here. And these are the smallest BA that you'll ever have to solder. The bigger ones are a lot easier. Um, if I get that focus your tip. So I'm going to clean this off again real quick before I put any more solder on it. And I got my little uh, solder lead hanging there. So just get a tiny bit more on the tip. Just some fresh solder. You're going to want to kind of plant your hand down the, uh, the steadier you can keep your hand the better. Alright, there we go. Now I'm doing this on camera, so it's probably not going to come out the best, but... Let's see if I can show you guys. Uh, here, give me one second. And this is exactly why I don't record videos during the day. Because you can hear that damn bird. So yeah, um, I put a little bit too much solder on the tip. I like to use just a tiny little amount, so that's why you have those... Uh, those two little dangly pieces hanging off. It's like kind of sharp looking. Normally if you use flux, um, you won't get that. But like I said, I, I prefer not to use flux. I'll just use rosin core. It's much easier. It's one less step. But yeah, as long as you get fresh solder on there. Um, as far as the temperature I'm running, it's... Uh, this is just a cheap soldering iron. I have a couple of them, but I like this one a little better. Um... It's about 350 Celsius. So depending on what you're doing, if you're trying to tin a wire lead, you're going to want it at about 400 C, at least 400 C. Um, if you're just doing regular soldering work, you're going to want it at like 325 to 375. Um, too low and the solder won't melt properly. Too high and you'll uh, burn the solder and you won't get a nice clean joint. So basically... That is what you get. Yeah, you can see that one's the left side's a lot nicer than the right side. And then what you can do is you can bend the leads. Alright. So that way your BA can lay flat. And you can also twist them. And uh, here I'll show you guys how I, how I st stick two BAs together. Give me one second. Alright guys, so I got here, uh, let me uh, hold the phone with my right hand because I'm, I'm left handed so it's a little harder for me to do this. So right here I have a, a 29689 and right here I have a, a 300, I mean I'm sorry, a 50060 BA, so I'm going to want to flip this over. There we go. Alright, and uh, so yeah, so basically you want to just bend your leads down flat, as flat as you can get them. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
um, these are some that I've already done, that I've already attached. So I got that one. And I got this one here. All right, so, um, so these are two that are already finished. So we're gonna glue these two together. And basically this is what you see inside an IEM. Um, try to show you. Uh, all right, so I got an IEM here. So you see how there's a couple of them glued together. Now, let me just try to show you something real quick. This is kind of a poor example. A one plus two would be a better example. So these two BA right here, these are tied together from the factory. Um, these as well. But these come out one nozzle. Actually, I think they both do. No. No, no, no. So, yeah. So, these come out as one nozzle. There's, they're already attached. They come like that during, like, uh, from the factory. But these bottom two, these are both uh, 29689. But you see, they're two independent drivers. Now, you can buy units. I actually have some sitting right here that this is also a dual 29689 but you see it's already got one nozzle so those come like that from the factory you don't have to do anything with them but if you're trying to attach two different or even two of the same BA together um, and they have you know they have multiple nozzles or whatever um, you can glue them together and what I do is I got a little bottle here of UV resin this is actually 3D printer resin, and this is the whole reason why my hands are messed up. Guys, be very careful with this stuff. Do not get it on your skin. If you get it on your skin, wash it off immediately. I did that, but this is still what I'm what I'm dealing with, and this is from this shit right here. Um, maybe, maybe not this specific one. I have multiple brands, but yeah, just be careful with 3D printer resin because it is toxic. It is extremely toxic. So, get a little dab of your of your uh, UV resin. You have to use UV resin. It can't be anything else. Um, I mean, you could use like some sort of adhesive, like super glue, um, but it's got to be able to bond quickly, um, or bond when you want it to bond. So that's the whole reason why I use UV is because it won't glue until I want it to glue. Um, and all I have to do in that case is just 